know that we are covering we know that we're covering uh, members' expectations. And uh, we started this lesson, I want to say maybe a month, month and a half ago. And, uh, and we started with, uh, for those that may be new with us on tonight, we started with uh, attendance uh, was our first point. And uh, we used uh, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. And then we went to uh, punctuality. Uh, which we use Ecclesiastics 8, 5, and 6. And then we went to commitment. Amen. Uh, 1 Peter 4 and 19. And then we went to participation, Matthew 28, 19, and 20. If you can see it on the screen, Minister Armbus is bringing it up for us. And then uh, the last one that we finished on our last Bible study, was confidentiality. Um, Proverbs 11 and 13 uh, was our key scriptures. If you haven't been with us, you can go back uh, to our previous lessons because those were the key scriptures that we use, but we use uh, multiple uh, scriptures. And Amen. Those scriptures will be in, uh, noted in, uh, if you listen to the lesson, watch the lesson, you will be able to pick up all the scriptures that we use uh, for our reference points. But the scriptures I gave you was just the key scriptures that we that we started with and then we kind of just built on that and so if we have any if you have any questions uh comments or concerns as far as those that i have listed already uh we can discuss those now before we go into our new point for today if there if there's any comments or any uh concerns or anything that you would like to add or say uh, you can put those in we can talk about those now does anybody have anything? Nobody has anything, okay. So we are, today we are at accountability. Amen. And our bullet point says, which is highlighted on your screen in yellow, says believers working responsibly in all things, knowing they will be judged accordingly to their deeds. And we use, uh, for a reference scripture, we use Matthew 16 and 27. And it says, for the son of man is going to come in his father's glory with his angels. And then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Amen. Accountability uh, means that it's the fact or condition of being accountable. And a lot of times we don't like to be held accountable and Amen. when we don't want to be held accountable it causes us not to truly be committed as well because we won't commit because we won't we don't want to commit uh it's hard for us to commit because we're afraid of being ac held accountable uh for what we're doing but no matter how you think about it uh every man every woman will be held accountable to the actions that they do to the deeds that they do um we, we have to give an account for what we do. We are accountable for our words, for Amen. our actions, for our deeds. Oftentimes, our commitment lacks, like I said, because we don't want to be held accountable. Uh, but we should be working to please God because we are accountable to God. No matter how you think about it, no matter how you look at it, we are accountable uh, to God. And we will pay the ultimate price uh, for what we do. Uh, Hebrews 13 and 7. Nope, I don't want to go there yet. I don't want to go there yet. I want to go to Romans 14 and 12. Amen. So, so then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Amen. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how you think about it. It doesn't matter uh, 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 how you think that God don't see it. God sees it all. And we are going to be held accountable to what we do, but we held accountable now uh, and, and what we do. It, but accountability, it causes us to check ourselves. It causes us to, to, to really look at ourselves. And if, we, if the truth be told, accountability, if we really operate in accountability uh, the way, it, the way it's, it's designed, it makes us a better person. 
uh, because it allows us to see ourselves for where we are and hold ourselves accountable. Is there anybody that hold yourself accountable sometimes? Sometimes you, you have done some things or said some things and you find yourself having to hold yourself accountable. You went to God and asked God for that forgiveness because you have held yourself to the standard of being accountable for your actions. And a lot of times we don't want to be held accountable. So we find, we see uh, in everyday life, we see that uh, folks don't want to be accountable. So they pass the book. They pass the, they pass the responsibility. They, they don't want to accept for what they have done. So they'll pass it over to somebody else. They'll drop the ball onto somebody else's lap. So they think, but you're still responsible for that. And you're still accountable to God, no matter how you think about it. Minister Mays, while you are on that point of responsibility of one's own actions, and I would like everyone to write that down as a bullet point uh, under the notation of accountability, because we must understand and examine ourselves because God holds us all responsible for our own actions. And that's our, our working responsibility in all things as a believer as well. The scripture he just gave us uh, lays out the format for the King James, for the NIV says it this way, say, so then each of us will give an account of ourself to God. Verse 13 says, therefore let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up, our, make up your mind not to put any stumbling blocks or obstacles in the way of your brothers and sisters. See, a lot of times we are judgmental on other folk, but we're never judgmental on ourselves. So one of the things we must do in this scripture that you pinpointed out on the accountability of us standing before the judgment seat of God, giving recognition for the, for the things that he holds us accountable to uh, is a good starting point for every believer. Because if we concentrate on being the example and not passing judgment on the other person, being accountable as a servant, being accountable as a steward, being accountable and being trustworthy where even with the things of God that he has blessed you with in your life, there's accountability of it with your children, with your mate, with your job. It, it, it covers every area, every working area of responsibility in your community. It's not just in a closed circle, but it's in every area because we represent Christ in the world. And it's one of the things that we must uh, concentrate on and we must really come to focus in our lives as believers. Go ahead, Minister Bates. Amen. That's right, because um, we must understand there is a big difference between accountability and judgment. Amen. And, 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 and I think what Pastor was just was just was just talking about that because we we oftentimes you we, we, we don't really know how to hold somebody accountable uh, because we turn, them in, we, we turn it into a judgment. But the Bible tells us, uh, for those that like to uh, be judgmental, uh, Matthew 7 and 5, he says, hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and right. then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Because a lot of times we, we're, we're, we're judgmental to folks. We're judgmental to folks sometimes based off uh, what somebody uh, have thought and not even and, and not known what somebody have thought or what somebody else have said to us. And we, 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 we jump the gun and we become judgmental instead of uh, trying to get the facts or, or, or worried about accountability. We, we are very judgmental, uh, but we have to learn to be more accountable uh, for our own self. We have to learn to be more accountable for uh, uh, those uh uh, that we are around as far as, uh, like Pastor said, our jobs, our, our mates, our kids, we have to, we, and we, we have to hold people accountable and we can't reward people that's not accountable. We have to, we, we have to make sure that we're not, that we're not judging them, but we have to make sure uh, that they're not able to continue to do the things that they were doing. If we, uh, if we see a way that we can assist them, uh, if we see a way that we can help those people uh, and make them more accountable because a lot of times uh, we will make ourselves accountable uh, if we really understood that God sees all. And I think that's what we think that God don't see it and God don't 
don't understand it and 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 and, uh, and anything like that but god sees all god knows all and so we Amen. will be accountable to god and we will uh uh, uh uh have to pay the pay the price for all the deeds that we've done in our body the good and the bad and, and so uh, i pray that, that we get to a point to where our good outweighs Praise our bad Amen. The bad that we did. If you ever look at, a lot of people don't don't really even know what it is. If you ever look at a at a court building or you walk into a courthouse, or they have a thing called the scale of justice, and that scale is there. And if you look at the scale and watch how the scale is tipped, we hope that that the scale is always tipped in our favor uh, for our good for our good works. You know, because it, it, it it's going to be a sad day if we thought that we were doing good works. And none of our works was really good. And we get there and he says, all these things were bad. Uh, uh, all these things were bad. All these things were bad. You did this and you did that. And, and we thought they were good because you can think that you're doing something good and actually be in God's way. Amen. God can be dealing with an individual and all of a sudden, uh, God can be dealing with an individual and you will find yourself being their little God. Right. Uh, because God is trying to deal with them. And so, then God will have to deal with you. So you have to be mindful. Uh, you have to, folks have to be accountable. It, but a true accountability makes us a better person in the long run. It makes us a, 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 a better person uh, overall in our overall life because it's not just, uh, it, it's our everyday life. It's our everyday living that we deal with that we have to go to. One of, one of the good things, and as we discuss this accountability, one of the good things, and, and I find it very uh, knowledgeable for us, if we would look at St. Matthew's chapter 25, uh, verse 14, Christ illustrates a parable here in that scripture about uh, bags of gold. And it starts from verse 14 down to verse 30. I just want to read a portion of it. And, and, and so you can see it, but it's a good read. For those of you that want to see the accountability as it relates to the, the foundational principle that Christ laid down himself. He said again, it would be like a man going on a journey who calls his servants and entrusts his wealth to them. Look at Christ. He entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, to another one bag, each according to his ability. And this is one of the things that we have to understand. God only holds us accountable to the ability of, to our ability. He doesn't, he doesn't all, he doesn't hold you accountable to somebody else's ability. He gives you what he requires of you and he'll hold you accountable for what he know you can handle. All right. He said to each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went and once went at once and put his money to work and gain five more bags. I'm paraphrasing. Also the one with two bags of gold, he gained two more. But the one who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now I'm gonna stop right there and I'm gonna leave it just, just enough uh, hanging on the table for you to go and see what happens because the master is going to return and he's going to hold each servant accountable to what he have given them. And I, I, I pull this out directly because each one of us have been given a divine gift from God, has been given a divine purpose from God that we might manifest and operate in the universe. And when that great judgment day come, God is going to hold us accountable, not just for what he's given us, but what we did with the gift that he has given us. Have we attained anything along with that? Because remember, in Matthew 28, he said, go out and make disciples of, of men, sharing with them the gifts that I would give you. Lo, I'm with you always until the end. Teach them to be disciples. So whatever gift he gave us, it was for the continuity of that gift growing and becoming mm -hmm. fruitful. Okay, Mr. Mason, I didn't want to take up time, but I would like you all to go and read that. That's Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. And, it's, and, and, and see how it ends and how 
Christ holds this man accountable because these words are from the lips of Christ himself. And he's, he's using this parable to teach us a godly principle about the gifts that we have been given and the accountability that goes along with them. He called our ministers to preach and they have accountability to preach the word. He called singers to sing and they have accountability to sing. He called deacons to deacon and they have accountability to do these things that people might see your works and glorify God, which is in heaven. And if you don't use it, saints, you lose it. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Minister Mays. Amen. If you don't use it, you lose it. I like that because a lot of times we have seen uh, during the course of this pandemic that folks have lost a lot. Amen. Because they have separated themselves from God during the pandemic instead of drawing closer to him. And, and, and so we, we, we have to uh, try to get out. We have to get ourselves lined back up. But when we're talking about accountability, we have to understand that we are accountable to God, but we also are accountable uh, uh, to the leaders uh, that God has placed uh, over us. Amen. Uh, Hebrews 13 and 17 says, have confidence in your leader and submit to their authority. Because Amen. they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden. Amen. Or that would be of no benefit to you. Do we have to give an account to those that said that they don't need nobody and they don't need this and they don't need that? You have to give, you, you, you have to have a leader. Everybody, every leader has a leader. Uh, and so I think when we stop thinking like that, that we have, a, we have arrived. And, and any time that we feel that we have, that we know it all, that we have arrived, uh, that, that, that nobody can say anything to us, then we at a point that, that, that our work on earth must be over uh, because uh, we all are students. Uh, we all are learners. We all are still learning. And so we have to uh, be accountable. And it, don't, don't be the person that everybody hates to see coming. Amen. And, 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 and you know what I'm talking about. We all have family members. We all have people maybe at work that, you know, it's a good day. It seems like it's a good day until when they walk in and you start to pray that it will be a peaceful day. Uh, let's not be, let's not be that. Let's not be that person. Amen. Because God, the Bible tells us that he says, I, behold, I'm coming quickly with my reward and it's with me. Amen. To give Amen. everyone according to his work. Revelation 22 and 12 says that, and Pastor just got finished talking about uh, everybody is accountable for whatever God have given them. And so whatever whatever God have given you, whatever uh, ministry that you're part of, whatever God have given you, you are responsible. You are accountable uh, for that. You are, you, 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 because we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And, mm -hmm. and, and we're going to get what's due to us. But then at that point, it's too late. Now is the time that we have to look at ourselves, that we have to uh, hold ourselves accountable. Uh, we have to have that conversation uh, with ourselves. There ain't nothing wrong with having a conversation uh, with yourself and, and, not, and, and deepen your relationship going to God and having that one-on-one -on -one with God is what we need. But there ain't nothing wrong with going to the mirror, looking in the mirror, uh, saying, you know, I ain't going to do this no more. I'm not going to do that no more. I'm going to do better at this. I'm going to do better at that. Because then that's how you start to see the growth. I may even challenge it even more, Minister Mays. I feel like it's necessary. It's not you saying there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm, I'm going to go a, a step farther. And I'm going to deem it to be necessary that we take a self-evaluation because we are constantly supposed to be examining ourselves. And that's one of the uh, ordinance uh, and commandments of God, that we that we be watchful because the enemy will come in and trick you into thinking that everything that you're doing is pleasing to the will of God. And that's why we must do a self-examination all the time and be repentful for the things that when we come short of the glory of God. Because it's easy for us to get wrapped up in the self. 
And all it takes is a few pats on the back. Turn to Luke chapter 12, verse 47 and verse 47 and 48. Luke chapter 12, verse 47 and 48. Luke 12, 47 and 48. 47 says, the servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows. Now, this is a servant of God, a Christian, a believer he's talking about here. Verse 48 said, but the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beat with a few blows. Now, if you're unknowledgeable, it, the punishment is less than you're knowledgeable. <laughs> And that's why a lot of us, we need to really reconvene on saying that we are Christian and then knowing the will of God and not doing it. Because he said, when you're knowledgeable of the will of God, you will be whooped with double stripes. All right. It goes on to say, let me, let me see where I stopped at. Few blows. It says, for everyone who has been given much, watch this, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much will be asked. So we constantly asking God for more of him, more, more power, more deliverance, more ability to preach his word, more ability to do the things of God, entrust me, empower me, impregnate me with your will and your desire. And God said, when you ask for these things and I grant them to you, I'm holding you at a higher accountability. You can't say to God, I'm tired. You can't say to God, I don't feel like it today. Hello, somebody. He said, well, much is given, much is required. And don't use God to your advantage. Don't try to use the power of God to pep you up and to prep you up. And I'm blessing God right now for these words because it's coming from the spirit of God. We're worried about exalting ourselves in the presence of men instead of worrying about about pleasing our almighty God. And he said, you're going to be punished for that. Let's be more concerned about pleasing the man upstairs than we're concerned about pleasing each other. Go ahead, Minister Mays. Amen. Because we, 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 we like to uh, run with people based on names. Um, We'll do anything for a big name. But is God in it is what the question should be. We, we, we as preachers, we, we sometimes like to uh, run with the, 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 I call it the pack. We like to run with the pack. But at the end of the day, the pack will not hold us accountable. The pack will not hold uh, you accountable as long as uh, you've been entertaining to them. As long as you're a benefit to them, uh, Amen. they're not going to hold you accountable to that. That's Amen. why. That's why I was very always careful with with running with the with with with, with the pack of preachers because uh, as long as you were a benefit to them, it was it was good. But as when you when you no longer when they no longer counted you as a benefit, then you were no good to them. But, Amen. Our focus should have been, should always be, is to please God, to do what God have told us to do, uh, to 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 please take care. I, I, I'm a believer, and 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 everybody don't have to think on this way. Uh, I'm a believer that you take care of home first. Amen. And and, and and some people look at me kind of sideways when I say that, but I, I I'm just, and that's just me. It's just the way that I believe. Uh, you, you take care of home first before you take care of somebody else uh, 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 location, before you take care of somebody else ministry. Uh, we, we take care of our own ministry first. We make sure that we are attending, doing what our ministry needs before we uh, uh, open, help somebody else with their ministry. Ain't nothing wrong with happen, but we got to make sure that we cover uh, that our home front is covered. I just gave you the scripture about that we're accountable to, uh, to our leaders and don't make it a burden on them. And so if we can, if we could come together and make, uh, as, as being accountable, if we can make things, the load a little lighter Amen. for our leaders, 
the God is pleased because God gave that in scripture that we should make it a burden for them and not a joy because if it's a burden for them, it's no benefit to us. That's the word. I ain't said that's the word. That's what the word said. And, and so we, we have to be, we have to take a, we have to take a, a, a self exact self evaluation on where we are, or where we are and what we need to work on, because we all have areas uh, that we, that we can work on, that we need to work on. Um, and, but we have to first understand that we have, whatever the problem is, is whatever the, the weakness is or whatever we have is, is, is that in our area? You know, we have to be, uh, we ain't got there yet. We had, we rolling up on transparency. You know, uh, I was talking, just talking to somebody uh, the other day and they were talking about weaknesses. And I told them uh, one of my weaknesses in life is I hate to go. Yeah. And they said, what do you mean you hate to go? I hate to leave people. And so a lot of times you'll see me just get up and, and once serve, once something is over, not even a service, anything, I'll leave because mm -hmm. I have a hard time in dealing with that. Uh, even when I go see my dad and my sister, I normally leave at a different time than they think I'm leaving. I normally call them once I'm back on the road. And that's just an area that I deal with. That's the area that I pray for. And that's the area that eventually it'll get better, but that's, that's an area that's always been that's that 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 I've always dealt with. That's always something that I've dealt with in my life is I don't like to say bye. I'll just get up and leave quietly and 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 exit and excuse myself. And that's just something I'll deal with. And I and like I said, I pray for that. Um I used to have short patience, but my patience are getting a little longer. So God well, is let, working. Let, let, let me bless your spirit in that. And I want you to deal deal with that from a spiritual perspective. Your problem is separation. And one of the things that man suffer with in the book of Genesis, if we go back to the beginning of time, one of our sins, one of our causes of sin was separation from God. So to deal with that point of separation that you feel that is just your problem, it's a problem that all of us have because death is the ultimate separation mm -hmm. and sin is the ultimate separation from God. If we choose not to follow the ordinance of God, and become Christians in Christ's life and accept this gift that God has given us through his son, Jesus Christ. We will not only be earthly separated, but we will be eternally separated. So that, that point that you're dealing with, Minister Mays, is a good factor. You see it, might see it as a negative, but it's good as a positive as well, because it's not in our desire to be separated. The Bible said together we stand and divided we fall. So I want you to look at that from a spiritual perspective as well. Yes, you should be able to say, so long, see you later. But in your heart of hearts, you're never separated. You're never separated. Okay? Amen. Amen. All right. Yes. So One of the things that I wanted uh, uh, everyone to receive, especially from this accountability, is not just dealing with the spiritual, is dealing with the kernel as well. We're not just teaching uh, principles that deal with just the spirit man. We're teaching principles that is life principles. And it deals with life as a whole. Because we surround ourselves not just by preachers, but we surround ourselves by people. We get in the packs with people. And it's based upon our need for them and their need for us. Right. And we'll cut people loose based upon a need for them. If they, if they no longer show a need in your life, then you, you no longer want to put up with them. You no, want, you no longer want to associate with them. We go to the next person. And we become users of that way. And a good scripture for that is found in 2 Samuel chapter 12, where Nathan rebukes David. And he gives David an a, 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 a Old Testament parable. Let me say it this way. <laughs> because they weren't teaching in parables during that time. But he gave David an Old Testament parable about a man that had many sheep and one that had one wee lamb because David had taken Uriah's wife on a colonel side. So when he, anytime we're, we're, we're not only just held accountable in relation to our spirit man, we held accountable in our colonel as well. We shouldn't want what belongs to somebody else. Amen. 
We shouldn't be selfish. We shouldn't be selfish in our demeanor. Because of all this accountability, it, it deals with all that, being selfish and, 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 and wanting everything your way and, 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 and wanting, wanting everybody to see your side. We got to learn how to take criticism as well as give criticism. I wish somebody talked to me tonight. Because I know I'm not the only one that deals with this. We're good at giving people a lecture, but we're not good at receiving a lecture. We're good at showing somebody their faults, but we're not good at receiving their faults. We're good at holding somebody else accountable to what they use, how they use their money, how they live their life, but we're never accountable to how we do ours. Okay? This is a this is a we thing, not a I thing. <laughs> yes, be it, yes, you are held accountable for what you are, but you are also held accountable for what you put out there because what you put out there, what you sow, you got to also reap. And don't be afraid of showing people goodness because goodness and mercy, the Bible says, shall follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You don't have to do evil for evil. And I know I'm jumping the gun, Minister Mays, because we haven't got to that part, but too many of us do evil for evil. And we're living in an evil world. There's not a day go by when we don't hear about somebody losing their life. Somebody's life being taken. And we're living in the last days. And when are we going to open up our eyes and see that it's time for us to get closer to God? Let's get these stumbling blocks out of our way. It ain't the devil, it's us. Hallelujah. He only can do what we allow him to do. Somebody talk to me on here tonight. That's right. He have no power and authority. Praise God. Go ahead, Minister Mays. That was 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1 through 15. And I'm giving you these scriptures because we need to get more in tune with the word of God. We need to see the examples of God's word, the application of God's word. And then when you read it and you see it in black and white, know that God is dealing with us the same way today. Because the same sins that they were doing in biblical times, we're still operating in the same sins. So let's quit making excuses for why we're the way we are. And let's deal with the reality of it. It's our fault. Amen, somebody. Go ahead, Minister Amen. Mays. Amen. All right, Go ahead, so, sir. All right, so we, we, we get ready to move off, off accountability. Does anybody on here have anything that they want to say about accountability before we move? I, I'm a firm believer that uh, understanding is key. And Amen. no use of us moving uh, uh, to the next point if we still have questions about accountability. Uh, if there's anybody that have anything about accountability, uh, uh, we'll give I you a, now. I have a comment about account accountability, if it's okay. Sure. Um, when we see wrong and do nothing, it's a, it's a quote, I can't quote it right now, but when we see wrong and do nothing, we're just as guilty as the person doing it. Amen. And because we're supposed to be children of God and we're supposed to be leading and helping to lead and leading by example. And in our walk of life every day, we have a, we have a chance when we see something wrong, speak up. Amen. Be that different one that step, step outside the boundary of what people expect. Be the one who say, not so. Amen. 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 God bless yes. you, Sister Cobbs. One of the things that we must understand, and, and when you open up, you say, use the term we supposed to be. And I, I want you to cancel that term out because we are what we are. And the Bible said God does not repent of his call. We are the children of God, baby. Regardless of how we look, regardless of how we act, God never disowns us. We as children, whether we operate or not, and he's continuing to try to get us in the right path, by his word and by his conviction and by his uh, uh, rebuking our, our, the things that we do. But we are his children. Right. And we represent him. Anybody else? Anybody else with a comment before Minister Mays moved? 
Go ahead, Doc. Hey, uh, before I go into vulner vulnerability and transparency, there is Sister Cobbs, you got on here, you 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 said something very powerful. Right. There is there is a show, um, there's a series that's out. Uh, if you have HBO Max, I think that's what it's called. It's uh, it's called We Own This We Own the City. It's mm -hmm. about it's about the uh, if anybody's seen it, you, you know it's uh, you could you could preach from that show all day. It's about some Baltimore cops that thought they owned the city of Baltimore. And, and, and nobody was holding them accountable until they all got locked up together and then everybody began to talk, you know, but nobody was seeing anything in the beginning. Nobody was holding them out. Uh, they, would, they would find themselves, they would separate themselves, uh, but they wouldn't say anything. And what happened is those ones that was uh, sep that separated, that went on to other positions, wind up, at the, wind up getting caught up in it anyway because they knew, uh, they knew of that that was going on. And so I, when, when, when Sister Cobbs got on here and was talking about that, I, I just thought about that show and it, and it meant so much. And it was, it was a true story. It's, it's based Amen. on a true story of, of uh, what that gentleman named, I think his name was Freddie Gray, that, that, that got <laughs> killed in Baltimore. It was based on, uh, up to that point, it was based on that. So, but now our point that we're gonna go to is vulnerability and transparency. Amen. Uh, believers freely revealing and exposing and expressing their lives with assurance that there is security for followers of Christ. And our key scripture that we're using is 1 Peter uh, 3 and 8, and then we're going to go down to verse 13. First, first okay. Peter 3 Minister, and 8. Before yes. you go into our textual scripture, I would like to give them another definition for those of you that's keeping notes. Will you please write this definition down? Okay, vulnerability and transparency is simply the willingness to show emotion or to allow one's weakness to be seen or known. Okay, to be seen or known. I'll give it to you again. Willingness to show emotions or to allow one's weaknesses to be seen or known. I wanted that clarification along with the uh, scripture definition that we gave you that's written on um, the information that Minister Armbruster has on the screen for us. Believers freely revealing, and that's freely revealing that we shouldn't have to be asked. We shouldn't be afraid of. We should be willing to show where God has brought us from. Because one of the one of the most blessed things about being a believer is we all used to be something. <laughs> that he mm. brought us from something. And we shouldn't be afraid to expose that and express that in our lives because it helps somebody else see that God is able to right. do these things. Okay, let's go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. And Minister Mazer, you had outlined uh, verses 8 and then verse 13, but I went down in my study, I went from verse 8 to verse 13. So for those of you that follow the word of God, you can, you can read that entire passage instead of jumping down because you're going to miss some critical parts if you go from verse 8 and jump down. And we don't need to jump down. We need to eat all of the meat, eat all of the vegetables, Eat all of the spinach that's on the plate. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Minister Mason. I'm going to go ahead and, because I had the whole thing too. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just read it down. Thank you. And uh, uh, First Peter 3, I'll be using the New King James Version. It says, First Peter 3 and 8 says, Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another, love as brothers. Be tenderhearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil or revealing or rival, rival one for rival one, but on contrary, blessing, knowing that you are called to this, that you might inherit a blessing for he who would love life and see good days, let him reframe his tongue from evil. Amen. And his lips from speaking decent. 11 says, let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him speak peace and pursue it. 
12 says, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteousness, and his ears are open to their prayers. Amen. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Amen. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Amen. And 13 says, And he who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? Amen. When you look at the the, the, bu the bullet point, if you look at the bullet point, the one of the things that jumped out immediately when you read this should have been their security for followers of Christ. And I say that should have jumped out because a lot of times we don't be transparent. We're not transparent because we are afraid of what somebody else can oh, do or, or use that or say against us. Uh, right. But I came to the point where you have to take the mask off and this will help us really see who we really are. Being transparent and, and, and vulnerable helps others. Uh, it, it helps others open up because if you're sitting, have you ever sat in a room with somebody uh, with a group and they were so tight that nobody was saying anything and you walked in and you start to share something in your life, about your life, about what God have done for you. And it opened up the dialogue for the group. It opened up that conversation because now mm -hmm. you have put them in a different place than they were when they, when, when they were just sitting in there and nobody was saying anything. It makes other people around us feel comfortable and Amen. it gives them a sense of security because Amen. they were already afraid of being accepted. Right, uh, because there's folks that are not transparent because they're afraid uh, to being of uh, being accepted. But if we initiate that, uh, if we initiate that conversation, if we uh, 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 freely freely expose and freely expose it, where nobody asks you out of it, uh, then they will feel comfortable with sharing something uh, with you. Uh, but you have to be mindful that when folks share something. Uh, with you that is not for us to use it uh, against them at a later time. Uh, well, because, uh, well, another thing it does, Minister Mays, it forces us to hide things from one another. And it's, you know, we start being very, uh, what's, what's that word? We, we start being very prejudicial against each other, especially when it comes saint to saint. You know, we all have our faults, we all have our likes and dislikes. And a lot of things, we worry so much about the judgment of one another where we exclude those people that God want us to connect to because we don't want them to see the vulnerability of where we are. And so we don't want to be transparent because we're worried about this image that we're trying to reflect. Okay? It's not, we're not called by God to be uh, uh, just an image. We're called to be the image of Christ. And Christ didn't do it just sometimes. He did it all the time. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13 says, whoever conceals their sins does not prosper. But the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. I'm going to say that again. Whoever conceals their sins, hides them, is not transparent, the Bible said this person does not prosper, but the one who confesses, the one who uh, renounces, confess and renounce, confess and renounce. Yes, I used to be, but I ain't no more. That's right. The Bible said them people finds mercy. Mm -hmm. And where that mercy is coming from, that mercy ain't coming from people. It's coming from God. Verse 14 said, blessed is the one who always trembles before God. Mm -hmm. But whoever hardens their heart falls into trouble. Hello, somebody. So it, it's a benefit for us to be transparent. Because the people that's talking about you, Gerald, they're going to talk about you anyway. Mm -hmm. They're not just going to talk about your bad. Your good ain't good enough. Mm -hmm. Hello, yo, amens is too much. Every huh. time I see him, he's saying praise the Lord. Why he just can't say hi? <laughs> y'all know y'all know people like this. Don't get quiet on me today. Every time I talk to you, it's blessed and highly favored. Why are you so happy? Because he woke me up this morning. Mm -hmm. Grateful.
grateful. Hey Amen. I think we lost Pastor, but get back on. Transparency. We have to understand that God will give you conversations to have with somebody. God have done things in your life and in my life. God have done those things to allow for us to share those things with somebody because it will be a blessing to them for, for it would open them up. It would draw them closer uh, to, to, to Christ because it will cause them to wonder what I, what, uh, what God have done for me, he'll do for you. Uh, uh, Sister Keita, he, he brought you through some medical problems, medical issues recently. And so when you share that testimony, when you share that story with somebody, uh, it, it will be a blessing to them. They will be able to share with somebody. Minister Armbrister, you can share that about cancer. Evangelist, you can share about cancer because when you open that up to young people, especially, they understand that you have been through something and that God have blessed you and brought you out of it because now it's not something that you're just talking about. It's a life experience that you have now to, to stand in front of the people. It's the experience that they look at. They will say that God have brought her through that so he can deliver me through this situation. Amen. But if we never open up and talk to the people. Hallelujah, never, I'm back. Yes. <laughs> we never been through something, that, that, the, the, the stuff that we've been through, then it won't, it won't, uh, that conversation will never come up. And that person may not never open themselves up to uh, what God has really want them to open up to. Don't worry about uh, the judgmental stages of it, about them using it against you, because God has you covered. Uh, because it's something that God has done in your life uh, that you have shared, openly shared with somebody else. And so we can thank God for that right now, because it was God that had done it in your life. But you ain't supposed to hold it to, for yourself. You're supposed to share it with somebody. You're supposed to tell somebody about it. Tell somebody how you got through it. Tell somebody when you thought about that. One of the Amen. things uh, that, 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 I, that I share with people is, is I often share with people. And some people look at me kind of sideways. When I first was in the hospital uh, going through my amputation process, I, I, I contemplated suicide. And everybody said, oh, Amen. man, yeah, I contemplated suicide. I laid a whole night in the hospital looking up. I had, I had, the, I, I had the whole plan in place. I had two of my friends Amen. that were police officers that was coming to the hospital. They was coming the next day. They was going to be in uniform. I was going to get one close enough to the bed to hug them. I was going to snatch his gun, and I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. But by the grace of God, when he came up to the hospital that day, they were working. When they stopped by the hospital to see me, he would not come over to the bed. God kept him from the bed. God wow. kept him at the door. He Amen. would not walk. He would Amen. not walk to the door, no matter what. I, I mean, to the bed, no matter what I told him, he would not come over to the bed. He 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 said, "No, I ain't coming over there." He goes, "You're in here. You know, I've been working the streets. I don't want to get that close to you." And, and so I'm gonna stay over here where I am. His partner, I tried to get him over. He would not come over. They wouldn't come to shake a hand because Amen. God already had a ram in the bush for me. God Amen. knew uh, what I had already planned, but God had another plan for my life. Uh, but God, as God, God, God allowed me to, I, I, when I thought like that, I, I was in a, I was in a dark place, but there was folks that was praying for me That's during right. that time. Amen. That story oh, has Amen. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. That's how God works. <laughs> It ain't yeah. our wills, his will. Praise God. And as I was sitting there talking and, and, and enjoying his Bible class tonight, uh, my iPad went crazy. But thank God, I always got a back up. Amen. <laughs> he has a back up. Because what the devil meant for evil, God's going to always turn it around for good. But we got to see the beauty of God in every situation, mm -hmm. in every circumstance. Mm -hmm. God is working for us. Mm -hmm. If we just surrender to his will and authority. And my brothers and sisters, it's not as difficult as we think it is. It's more, it's more complicated to not, not surrender to God. That's where the problem comes in. When we don't surrender. Praise God. Go ahead, Amen. man. 
Mr. Mage. It said, uh, look at Ephesians 4 and 25. He says, therefore, put away lying. Let each other Amen. want to speak truth with his neighbors. For we are members of one another. Mm -hmm. We can be truthful with each other. We can take off the mask. The mask. <laughs> Uh, we, 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 we've, we, we've hidden behind a mask and uh, it, it's time for us to be uh, transparent uh, with, the, with, with, with people, uh, you know, uh, Apostle Paul, you know, he was very transparent in his ministry uh, uh, when he talked about the, that he was the least of the apostle who was not even worthy to be called an apostle because right. he persecuted the church, but he openly he shared persecuted the church. He did it what he had done he was not afraid to talk about it how many of us are afraid to talk about some of the things uh that we have done now 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 let me let me let me go here for a minute uh when you are being transparent with somebody make sure that it's somebody that you're supposed to be transparent with like that. amen not everybody amen. That's not everybody hurts. need to know everything and so Same. you have to, Man. that means that you have to listen to God, listen to the voice of God as he began to talk to you, to tell people uh, your stories and to tell them uh, different things. God will give you the, the instructions on, on, on who to talk to and who to be transparent with, because those are be the ones that are need to hear your story, that your story uh, draw them closer to him. And, and that's what it's all about, because not everybody... Uh, I, I didn't say gospel, gossip. I said you, we have to be transparent with people and share our stories, not what we uh, thought, not what we heard about uh, our sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so. Yeah. And, yes, and we have to share our story. And can't nobody share your story better than you. That's right. You have to be willing to share that story. Uh, and, and the Bible encourages us all the time. First uh, Thessalonians 5 and 11 says, therefore, <laughs> encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. We have to uh, build each other up, not tear each other down. We have to lift each other up. When we're going through, when we're going through, uh, say, when, when, when you're going through, we should all be going through as brothers and sisters. Uh, That's right. uh, when, when, when you're excited, we should all be excited. When you're blessed, we should all be rejoicing uh, because we know that our blessing is coming. But instead of us being happy, we seem to be sad when God blesses somebody. We cannot control who God blesses and how he blesses them. Uh, but we have to worry about him, how he's going to bless us. God is still in the blessing business. He's still blessing people. But how do you think we're going to ever get, you're going to ever get blessed if you're hating on everybody that God is blessing? Amen. Talking about being transparency, we have to open up. We 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 have to open up and, and allow God to speak to us because transparency opens up. Uh, it, it, yeah, truly, it opens us up to be vulnerable. But if if it's for God, you have nothing to worry about because God will cover you. God will protect Amen. you. It, it, it's all I think I was muted or something, but if you were, if you yeah, you, were, you, you, you was. Can you say that again? The last part of your statement was muted. Oh, we were, if we focus on doing what God has told us to do, because temp transparency only opens us up to be vulnerable. It does open us up to be vulnerable, but and it, it's if it's with God, you have nothing to worry about. You don't have to worry about anything because God will cover you. God will protect you. God has been the one that has been keeping you. And truth be told, the, 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 the issue that you had in your life that God brought you to, he wants you to share that with them. So don't worry about them using that against you, but you have to make sure there's a right place and a right time for everything. And you have to make sure that you're in the right place at the right time when God have told you to be, uh, to share that story, to share whatever that is that you're opening it up to somebody about, because I promise you, if you open it up with somebody and you're being truthful and transparency about it, I promise you that it will bless you, that it will open you up more, but it will bless that person as well. 
Well, it, it, well, number number two, Minister Mays, it will not allow them the position to condemn you because you're showing them where you was, not where you are. And one of the things we have to understand is God uses the moment to show uh, through truth where he, he has brought us from. St. John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, verse 8, 9 says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. All right? But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So whatever we was in, in confession, God deliver us from that. And people try to use your path. They don't always, the enemy always use your path against you. And not only people, the devil brings it up. It's one, of the, it's one of his greatest tools is to make you see yourself uh, less than what you are in God. Because anytime you see yourself in a lesser state, you don't go to a almighty God because you don't feel a worthiness to. Amen. It's one of his greatest weapons is to get you to, to, to so uh, feeling so corrupted within your own flesh that you don't seek out an incorruptible God. But this verse tells us that it ain't you purifying you, it's God purifying you. From all right, we don't have the power to clean ourselves. That's why you hear me say over the pulpit all the time, quit telling people you won't come to church when you get yourself together. You can't get yourself together. No man come unto God except he bring them. And that's all of us. There's no purification without holiness. And there's no holiness without the Holy Spirit. So God is the one that cleanses us and takes out all the impurities of us. And if each one of us had time to be a testimony tonight, we would say the things that we desire to do, God took it away. Because in our flesh, we still like doing them. I don't know about y'all, I like doing the stuff I was doing. Sin was good. But God took the taste out of my mouth. You don't, do, you don't sin because you dislike it. Hello, somebody, talk to me. How you doing? what you're doing because you you don't like what you're doing you're doing it because you like it you tell them the truth praise god that's, you ain't gonna do nothing you don't like that's why you don't come to church and that's, that's why you don't be on bible class because you yeah. feel it's an obligation and anytime you feel something is an obligation you're not committed to it but god said he wants you to love me with your whole heart and the bible said where your heart is your treasures are there also hallelujah Amen. Yeah, Man. So, so, so the because all of our past, even though it's in the past, it had a purpose and it helped us get to where we are today. Because God, because the glory of God was revealed because we seen where we were at and where God have brought us to. So we have a we, so so we see that we can see the growth from where God has brought us from. So don't. Stay in the past. Don't. Uh, I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was uh, 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 minister on bishop. I don't know if it was pastor. Somebody had preached one time about a sermon about the rearview mirror in a car. About that's why the rearview mirror is small and the, and, the, and the front windshield is is large. It's because minister, the rearview mirror. Minister on bishop. Minister on The rearview mirror yeah. allows us to take a look back every once in a while, but not reflect back too much, too much, and not see too far Amen. back. Amen. See the great purpose that what God has of, uh, uh, ahead of us, what God, mm -hmm. where God has brought us from, and where we are at today, and so we can thank God for that, and we can also be, and that because of that, we can be transparent with somebody else about where God has brought us from, uh, because then I will promise you, if you sit down with somebody and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and start to share your story. I started to share what God have bought you from, what God have uh, 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 bought you from a mighty long way. I promise you, they will open up and tell you everything about their lives because they've been they looking for the right person to share to. with. Amen. But they haven't been able, they haven't found Amen. the person Man. to share it with. They haven't found anybody to be transparent with them enough to share their story. So they've been afraid to release that story. They want to share their story with you, but you have to uh, be transparent with them first and open up to them. And I promise you, they will open up to you 
They will share their life story with you and you will both be standing Amen. aside and give God the glory because even when they think that their life is not where they want it to be, when you get finished talking to them, you can show them the glory of God in their lives or how God have bought them a mighty mm. long ways, no matter how they think that they are, no matter what low spot they may think that they're in right now, you can yeah. show them the purpose. Uh, you can show them God in their lives and how God is still operating. You can just simply tell them that it was God that woke you up this morning and it was God that started you on your way. It was God that let you put one foot in front of another. It was God that put that pack of hot dogs on the table. We have to be transparent with the people. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Amen. 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 And, and it's, a it's a beauty in it. Being transparent. Let, let us be used to God. That people might see the glory of God in that transparency because all you're doing when you allow yourself to be transparent, my brothers and sisters, all that you are doing is allowing people to see how awesome our God is. When he can take something as messed up as we are and make us what we are today. I don't have a problem telling people that if it wasn't for the grace of God and the hand of God, I wouldn't be who I am today. Right. And the same God that did it for me will do it for you. And do it for you. All you do is surrender. Nobody is re beyond repair. Nobody is beyond reaching and touching of God to transform. This whole thing, transformation, is God's best. He's good at making something. <laughs> yeah, and he don't need. He don't need any material to work with. Praise yeah. God. Praise and God. as we continue to to ask God to to, to use our vulnerability to use. Use our example because there's so many people out here, and I find this daily that want somebody to communicate to, but they're so ashamed of who they are, they can't talk to anyone. Oh, Can must. you be that soul that God uses? Can you be that listening ear? Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Mm. Amen. There's so many people that shut up behind prison doors that need a voice, they need an ear. Yes. They, yes, they done wrong, but they're sorry they done wrong. Once right. a criminal ain't always a criminal. That's right. Once a sinner ain't always a sinner. Who are Amen. we to judge? Let's give people the same thing God gave us. Let's give them a chance. Praise God. What happened to our love for one another? Yeah. Our love has watched cold. But we can see. 19 people get killed and we just change the channel no emotion mercy God. we can see a baby wander around and get drunk the other day and we just change the channel no time no prayer for the mother mm. and i know it's a lot of people convicted well where was the mother at why she wasn't watching right. maybe you don't have any kids because all it takes is a second for them to get away from you that's right i've been there done that i've been been shopping when my daughter was little and i turned my head and next thing I know, she was gone. Right. But God. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, she true. was hiding up under the clothes rack, playing a game, and it wasn't game <laughs> <Same> time. <laughs> but God. Oh, and it could, it could happen to any one of us. <laughs> Folk, don't forget that we're human too. That's right. And it's only through the grace of God that we're able to function and to do the things that we're doing. And let's give God what's due him. Yes, Lord. Amen. True. Second Corinthians Amen, 12. Amazing. Second Corinthians 12, 9 and 10 says this. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power Amen. is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the Amen. more gladly about my weakness. So that Christ's power may rest on me. 10 says, this Amen. Is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults and in hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. He His said he, he what? He delight in them? Yes. Did he say he delight in them? He delight in the weaknesses <laughs> and insults and hardships Praise and, God. and difficulties. He said, when I am weak, then I am strong. Mm. Yes, Lord. 
Y'all right? that scripture down you're gonna need that because the devil's gonna test you he's gonna try give it to him one more time minister Mays. he's gonna test you. he's gonna try you. he's gonna make you feel bad about yourself when you should be feeling good about yourself because every trial that you go through is simply a trial that god is trying to use to make you better and to take you to a higher place but you got to pass test number one to get to the, to the finals baby you can't get you can't go to the finals if you ain't passing the quiz who am i talking to tonight the quiz time is over. It's time for us to be in the final stages of this thing. Mm -hmm. Give it to him, man. Second Corinthians 12. Give him that scripture nine, again. Second Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. It says, I'm going I'm 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 to read it again. I'm going to read it again <laughs> for somebody. Somebody ain't going to go to it, but I'm going to read it and make sure that you got it. He says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses. Yeah. So that Christ's power may rest on me. And in 10, he says, this, that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Hold it right there, Mays. Now, going back to Minister Mays giving an example about Paul. Paul was one of the men that persecuted Christ himself. When he was on the Damascus Rose, Christ knocked him off, the, off the, the mule that he was riding and said, Paul, why do you persecute me? This is Paul talking, people. One that, one that was the, 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 the lowest of lows. All he did was persecute the church, went around killing the saints. But God changed him yeah all right and he mm. now he's saying i delight in my weakness i delight in my hardship i delight in my persecutions mm. he doesn't flip the script now uh -huh. because he's been touched by a hand of god yes 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 y'all said sticks and stones may break my bones but words would never hurt me. don't want to hurt me if you ain't god hmm nothing her hmm. because he takes it away yes he said those that suffer with me shall reign with me, reign with me. but we yes, gotta be willing to go through the things for god praise god yeah. praise god so somebody ought to give god an amen give, give me an amen emoji or something give me an amen up there on, on, on the screen somebody send me an amen let me know you out there that this is blessing you tonight Amen. I don't know how to do all that. Go ahead, man. If you, if, you, if you can't give the emoji, just 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 type it in. If you don't know how to do it, just say amen where you are. You ain't gotta be heard. God amen. got you. Because amen is simply I agree that this is true. And if we agree that God's word is true, then our eye is yay and amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Because God gets the glory. Amen. God gets the glory. Amen. That's right. God, God, God gets the glory. And so in, 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 in transparency and in vulnerability, I, I hope that after tonight, with the lesson on tonight, that we have seen ourselves in a different light to where we are willing to open up and share our story with somebody mm -hmm. uh, that it may be a blessing to them you know when you Amen. talk about you know you don't have to worry about don't be afraid to open up to talk to them i promise you that if you open your mouth god will begin to speak for you uh god Amen. will let the words roll up don't worry about having the right words don't worry about and this ain't only for no preacher this is for all believers uh, because god blesses us all Thank so, you. And we all have to be transparent because every time there's something in the Bible, we oftentimes allude to that must be only for the preachers. That must be only for the ministry. That, no, that's for all of us. Uh, to get. That's for all of us. To be transparency. We're we, we going to mess around and, and get ourselves in all kinds of trouble worrying about not adhering to the word of God because we worry about that talking about it must be for the preachers only. It ain't for the preachers only. It's for everybody. The word is the word. It's for us all you have a responsibility to go out and share that story with somebody. God, 
didn't deliver you. God didn't give you that story. God didn't give you what he gave you for you to keep it to yourself. That's like coming to church on Sunday. God doesn't uh, want us to come to church on Sundays and get a word and then store it just for us. Uh, we're to Amen. get that word for our lives and we're to go out and be transparent and, and with somebody uh, to share the word that we got because not everybody is coming into the church house. And so uh, that's part of our ministry. That's not just for the preacher. That's for everybody, every believer, every saint that's there. We're supposed to get the word and, and we're supposed to apply it to our lives. But then we're supposed to actually go out and share God's word with somebody else that ain't going to be able to make it to the church. That may be not coming into the church. But if you go and, 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 and talk to them at their level and be transparent with them, they may want to come and hear about your God more. Uh, they yeah. may ask you, Amen. what must I do to be saved? Amen. Hey, what must I do uh, to, 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 to get a story like that? And we begin to tell them. But if we don't, if we just take the word and, and store it up for ourselves and never take it out and share it with nobody, then we're in trouble. We, we, we're not spreading the word. We're not taking the word out. We'll never make uh, the disciples that we're supposed to be making because we're holding it all for ourselves. We have to uh, go out and share uh, his yeah. word with the people. Yes, yes. Let somebody know. Let somebody know. That's right. Amen. Uh, let some. We have Amen. to let somebody know. Uh, I I I thank you all for being here. I'm gonna go back, and I wanna I wanna <laughs> for those who late, I wanna go back to the to 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 the top of this thing. Uh, this thing is important. Uh, we 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 well, a lot of times we we had this in new membership class. And, 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 and we took our time Amen. with this thing. And, and, and so there we go. Minister Armbister just highlighted. We, we talked about attendance, uh, Hebrews 10 and 24 and 25, punctuality, Ecclesiastes 8, 5 and 6, commitment, 1 Peter 4 and 19, participation, Matthew 28, 19 and 20, counter, uh, confidentiality, Proverbs 11 and 13. Tonight we covered accountability, Matthew 16 and 27. Uh, vulnerability and transparency, 1 Peter 3 and 8 through 13. But we went all the way down from 8 to 13. Put a, put a mark there and just make it from 8 to 13 because it'll bless you. And I pray that you have, that you wrote those down or that you copy them off the screen and that you continue to look at those daily uh, because this is the expect expectations. And, you know, if you will look at all of these, when these were uh, uh, put together in a lesson, as a believer, this is what we're supposed to be doing. This is our expectations. But if you really look at these, these are life principle uh, points. These are points that if we mm -hmm. line our lives up completely operating off of these points, our life will be lined up with the way that Christ intended for it to be, because this is everything. Uh, I, all of this is referring back to our likeness in Christ for us being like Christ like. And so when, when we operate like this and so accountability and vulnerability, transparency was ours. And um, at our next lesson, we will just continue to roll down. I am grateful for the time that we have. Uh, even this time uh, rolls by us uh, fast. I thank God for tonight uh, because at 5.30, I didn't have internet. Uh, my neighbors didn't have no internet service. So I called pastor and said, pastor, uh, I don't have an internet right now. And uh, I began to pray. And by 5.59, internet kicked on, kicked back off, but it kicked back on. But I thank God that he held it on for this long, that he allowed mm -hmm. the word to go forth because the devil is a liar. Amen. And the word was going to still go for it. And yes. so uh, well, we thank you all. I'll see if Pastor have any final words. And then we will uh, see if you have any final words and thoughts. And we'll get out of here. Go ahead, Pastor, if you have anything. <clears throat> no, no, Mr. Mays, I preached my sermon already. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we have, uh, I thank God for all the uh, uh, leaders that are on with us tonight. Uh, I'm uh, I have preached two sermons tonight already. Uh, Minister Armbrister, so if you have anything, comment that you would like to uh, make at this time, would you please make a comment to the people and encourage them or evangelists? I see you, if you're still on here, you would like to make a comment on this subject tonight, a brief comment uh, to, to encourage our listeners. I would appreciate that.
you know, Minister God Mays, um, God bless you. thank you for this lesson and um, continue to do the Lord's work. And I think just covering these principles and topics are extremely necessary. And, and, and I like that you're taking your time to, to walk through each one. And I hope that everyone's taking it to heart and being blessed and challenged by um, these principles. Amen. Evangelist Johnson, you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Okay. Uh, you have any comment or you, you say something to the people of God? Um, just wonderful lesson and just to encourage everybody to take um, what was said on tonight and apply it. And as um, um, Minister May said, to look into the look in the mirror first. And it always starts with yourself first to see. I've always been an advocate of looking at myself first to see what more I can do better to be um, a servant of God and not to be so you know judgmental as well as being held accountable for our actions and our deeds, um, not just towards ourselves but towards each other. Amen. 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 Okay. This that concludes our lesson tonight. If there's any other minister, I'm not seeing your name. If you'd like to make a comment at this time, because I don't exclude uh he or she preachers. Uh, if you want to say something very briefly, you have the option right now. If not, Minister Mays is going to pray us out. Okay, okay. Minister Mays, would you pray us out? Yes. Most gracious and eternal Father, Master Creator of the universe, Lord, we thank you that you have allowed us to come together one more time, Lord. We thank you for those that are on here right now, Lord. We ask that you will continue to bless our pastor and co-pastor, Lord. We ask that you will touch every family, every leader that's on here right now. Lord, we ask that you will touch Sister Cobb, Mother Cobbs and her family right now, Lord, that you will yes. touch them in a mighty special way, Lord, that you will touch the Johnson family right now, Father God, as they prepare to a homegoing celebration for her uncle right now, Father God. We ask that you will continue to comfort that family, Lord, that you will continue to encourage that family right now, Father God. We ask that you will touch all those others that was already prayed for on a prayer list, Lord, that you will continue to touch them in a mighty special way. Lord, the family's just grieving right now. Lord, continue to protect and bless our children right now, Lord. The mother that lost her daughter at the beach right now, Father God, we ask that you will yes, touch that Lord. mother's mind and heart right now, Father God. Let her know that she shouldn't hold herself guilty for that, Lord, that things happen, Lord, but we ask that you will be with her during these times right now, Lord. We ask that you will touch our church as a whole right now, Lord. Every church is open in, in your name right now, Lord. We ask that you will continue to touch the Clinton family right now, Lord. Touch Sister Betsy right yeah. now, Lord, as she's having a hard time right now, but Lord, we ask that you will touch her, Lord. Touch Sister Jacquees Stevens right now, Lord. We ask that you will continue yes, to heal her Lord. body, continue to touch her right now, Lord. Continue to encourage her when she feels down, Lord. We ask that you will continue to touch those around her right now. Lord, we ask that you will touch Sister Brenda Long right now, Father God, that you will continue to touch her body right now, Lord. Touch those caregivers that's helping her right now, Lord, that they will always do the right thing right now, Father God, that they will be the spokesperson for her right now, Father God. We thank you, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you all tonight. We thank God for you. We love you. We love you all. God bless you.